Now we can also look at two other um, reactions and I'm going to quickly go through them without really giving you examples of that and uh, that is going to be D dehalogenation and dehydrohalogenation and these are literally just the opposites of what we looked at just now that is where we would start with a, um, a haloalkane and the reaction that would be the reactants and our products will be what we had as reactants in these examples okay so instead of having an alkene and a hydrogen hal halide I will have a haloalkane and I will produce these two elements and instead of or instead of having a alkene and a halogen produce a haloalkane I'll have a haloalkane and um, um, uh, it will produce an alkene and a halogen okay so I'm going to look at just the reaction conditions for one of these and explain that one for you um, extensively the other one is not so important so dehalogenation is not so important for um, um, for this course but dehydro halogenation that one and its reaction conditions are quite important so as we said um, we we are going to start with um, uh, haloalkane haloalkane not like that haloalkane and then this haloalkane is going to be broken up into its original uh, alkene and uh, hello um, hydro hydrogen halide hydrogen halide okay now how does that work again okay, what are the reaction conditions well what is going to happen is that the um, the haloalkane is going to be in a liquid form okay so the haloalkane in a liquid form is going to be mixed with a sodium hydroxide now sodium hydroxide plus is going to be dissolved in an alcohol okay and that's not so important for now okay an alcohol alcohol for example ethanol now we're going to do alcohols in the next lesson and you'll know what ethanol then is but I'm sure you can see F refers to two carbons with a, um, a hydroxide um, as part of its chain okay so the sodium hydroxide is going to be mixed with alpha and um, ethanol this mixture is going to react um, or going to be important in this reaction the reason why is if I look at my halogen, uh, sorry, my haloalkane, I'll have my carbons and I'll have my um, however many carbons, then I'll have my hydrogens and I'll have twice as many carb hydrogens plus one and then I will have a halogen. Okay, so we're going to look at the haloalkane where we only have a single halogen because we're producing hydro halide in other words there's a halide and a hydrogen okay which means we only have one halide um, and what is going to happen is the sodium is going to first react with the halide to produce this is a, a salt okay the sodium is going to um, react with the halide and the extra hydrogen is going to react with the um, um, the hydroxide to produce water H2O okay now when these two are mixed together they will again form these two together will again form sodium hydroxide 
which is what I originally had okay and it will pr also produce hydrogen halide okay in other words these two together will now produce that now this will all be in a solution this is all in the mixture and uh, what has happened now is we've, we've broken up the hydrogen and the um, um, the halogen bonds and so there is now so we've had this happen we had a hydrogen there and a halogen at some point now these two bonds were broken so now we have a, a hydrogen and a or we have two valence electrons available and so in a very simplistic way what happened is we had uh, here one hydrogen carbon the other one had a halogen and these two bonds were broken through our process and so we've got now this carbon and that carbon both of them have an extra valence electron and these two will then now produce that alkene double bond that we require so what we have in this whole solution is we have an alkene in the solution okay and then we also have these um, these two products in the solution as well and what what now forms a very important uh, important part in this process is heat we're going to heat this process up and in this whole process by heating it up you'll notice that the alkene has the lowest boiling point okay and so alkene will escape from this reaction first and um, by escaping from the reaction so in our vessel where all of this is happening okay right at the top we're going to have our alkene escaping because we are adding heat to this thing uh, causing the alkene to reach its boiling point first and therefore escaping um, at some uh, from the vessel through and this is called um, condensation the um, the vapors are condensed on the size sides of the um, the next vessel so we've got vapor in the next vessel whatever type of closed vessel that is we've got the vapors condensing on the side so it might be in a um, in a bucket of ice or something like that where we're just um, cooling down the vapors that are coming from here and that leaves in here our um, solution of sodium hydroxide and um, hydrogen uh, halogen hydrogen halide which can uh, undergo a different uh, um, process to extract the um, hydrogen halide but uh, important here is that in the end we are left with our CNH 2N minus 1 plus hydrogen halide so um, I hope I didn't confuse you too much so what are the reaction conditions if we just summarize it okay the, re the reaction conditions for this experiment would be um, alkene sorry not alkene the hydroalkane hydroalkane is added to a concentrated solution concentrated solution of uh, and uh, sodium hydroxide okay it could also be potassium hydroxide you can use either one of those two and an alcohol and we'll say ethanol we'll use ethanol um, and then the um, this must be heated this is heated and then the vapors are condensed the vapors are condensed undergo condensation let's rather say undergo condensations 
undergo condensation. Oh, sorry for writing down here. Okay, those are the reaction conditions. Well, I'm sorry this was a long video. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.